All right, picking up where we left off, let's do some more examples. All right, let's look at number seven. Um, the problem suggests that we distribute the 4i. 32i plus 4i squared. Not done. Common practice has us uh, reduce all the terms down to, at most, just an i. So i squared is not acceptable. 32i is fine. i squared equivalent to negative 1. Remember, you're going to multiply by 20, so that adjusts the sign and makes it change to minus 20. And again, another common practice is going to have us rearrange and put the real part up first. Negative 20 plus 32i. Number eight um, looks kind of cumbersome, a lot of work, but we'll try and uh, get through it kind of quickly. We're going to FOIL each binomial, after which we'll distribute the negative through and do any necessary cleanup. So let's FOIL this. So if we were to write two of these binomials out side by side, if we were to expand, so to speak, uh, the result would be 16 plus 20i plus another 20i and the two last terms would be 25i squared. Moving on to um, distributing, foiling, multiplying this binomial. Remember it's subtraction and everything we get needs to be put inside a parenthesis so later in the next step we can distribute the negative. So everything right here um, when we FOIL uh, we're going to get all these terms except for um, these two inside terms will both be, both be minus 20. Okay, we're going to distribute the negative through, but along the way we're also going to collect these two like terms. Uh, this might be a good time too, also, um, to change i squared to negative 1 and multiply it by 20, uh, 25 and get minus 25. We don't want to do too many things, but that, certainly that's manageable. Okay, uh, same thing, we're going to distribute the negative through, but we're also going to take care of some other things that we might um, be able to do so as well. So minus 16. Okay, these would collect to minus 40i, but we're going to distribute the negative, so that's going to become plus 40i. There it is. The delay. Uh, this will become, uh, inside here, uh, minus 25, but remember we want to distribute, and this is going to become plus 25. Like the 16s are going to cancel. Uh, looks like the 25s are going to cancel. Looks like we have negative 25, positive 25. Uh, looks like the result is just going to be ADI. Okay, so this is a pure imaginary number. Okay, I think you have that idea. Let's move on to the next topic um, and do some work there. All right, so the next topic is complex conjugates, and I have a pair of complex conjugates right here to the right. Uh, if I start with A plus BI, then its complex conjugate would be A minus BI. Notice that the two A's are the same. They have the same signs. So if A starts out positive here, it remains positive here. If A starts out negative here, then this A stays negative. The only thing you're changing is the operation from addition to subtraction, or if it started out as minus bi, the complex conjugate would be plus bi. So you're only making one sign change, so to speak. And um, that would um, contribute to you finding the complex conjugate for a number. Uh, and they have a special purpose that we're going to see in just a minute. Practice with it. So the directions here say multiply each complex number by its conjugate. Okay, so our first complex number is 1 plus i. directions. Multiply the complex number by its conjugate. So there's your problem. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put this in parentheses, this complex number, and then you're going to build its conjugate be 1 minus i. 
So we're going to have to FOIL. I'm going to work to the right instead of down. First terms. Okay, notice that the outside and the inside produce opposite terms, so they're cancel. This is a sum and difference of two like terms. Okay, so I don't even need to do the O and I in the word FOIL. I just need to do the multiplication of the two first terms and the two last terms. Well, that product's going to give minus I squared. Again, we're not done. Um, I think I'm going to continue working to the right. I could start working down. Then remember, I squared is negative 1. So it's minus negative 1 plus 1 um, is 2. All right, complex co conjugates will serve a purpose in a minute, but what I want you to take away from this example is when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, what happens is the imaginary part is going to cancel and we're, we're left with a, just a real number. Okay, let's do one more example. Okay, let's take this complex number and multiply it by its conjugate. So let's create it in another binomial. So it's going to stay negative 4, but the operation is going to change from subtraction to addition. You've just created a sum and difference subtracting of two like terms. These two are the same, and then these two terms are first and last, because outside and in the product of the two first terms is 16. The product of the two last terms is minus 9i squared. Think about what's happening. We're getting rid of the imaginary part, but we can adjust and make i squared negative 1. So that sum is going to be 16 plus. Again, like I said, complex conjugates serve a special purpose, okay? and it's for this next, um, this ne next objective that we're going to tackle that um, that purpose is evident. All right, so take a look at this example. The only directions are right in standard form. Well, you might remember that standard form does mean that we have to write the answer as a plus bi. Right in standard form. And that's all it tells us. We have to know standard form means a plus bi. Well, when you look at this problem, it's a quotient. That's not even near standard form. We've got to get rid of the fraction. Okay, well, the way to do that, how we're going to tackle that, is we're going to look at the denominator. We don't want to divide by an imaginary number. Previous lesson, we saw that if you multiply by the complex conjugate, yikes, oh, don't mess up on me now. If you multiply by the complex conjugate, you're going to get... So our approach for this objective, right in standard form, multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator. That is getting rid of this denominator. So locate the complex conjugate, put it here, and then go ahead and populate the numerator with the same complex conjugate. Okay, I don't think that this uh, Camtasia likes the red pen, so I'm going to... Alright. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply conjugate. Oh, don't do this. So I'm going to multiply the two binomials on top, the two binomials on the bottom. So I think I'm going to pause, save, save some time there, and I'll put it there. So you guys attempt that, and then come back and check with me. All right, so hopefully you did the math right, the foiling. I just foiled the two binomials on top and the two binomials on bottom, which they're conjugates, so um, it's just going to be the F and the L. All right, so we have a little bit of cleanup to do in the numerator, so let's tackle that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and change this to minus 6. So I'm going to collect it with positive 8, so that becomes 2. And I'm going to collect my imaginary part, so that's 16i. Okay, a waste of time. In the denominator, I see that this is going to change to plus 4 to add to the 16 I already have, so that's 20. We're getting closer to the um, answer, a plus bi. What we can do is we can separate this, put the 20 underneath both terms of the number. Well, if you put 20 underneath 2, okay, you're going to get 1 tenth plus, I'm going to put 20 underneath 16, but I can see that I'm going to be able to simplify that in my next step. That might be too much for me right here. That i can either stay up top with 16 or you can kind of hang it off to the side here, but never in the denominator.
Okay, so we've got 1 tenth. You see 4 goes into 16 4 times and 4 goes into 25 times. So it looks like plus 4 fifths I. Again, be careful about your placement with I. If you're going to put it out to the side, make sure it doesn't look like it's uh, wrote our answer in standard form. All right, so that's one good example. Uh, let's just look at another one here. What if given this problem? 2 over 4 minus 5i. 2 over 4 minus 5i. And the same objective, write in standard form. Well, standard form, again, is like this. So what that tells you without telling you what to do is to multiply by the conjugate, the complex conjugate of the denominator. I'd like to do this in red, but it just doesn't seem to like that, okay? All right, the numerator's easy. I don't have to uh, FOIL because I just have a um, constant multiplier. So 2 times 4 is 8, plus 5i is 10i. In the denominator, um, we're going to have 16 minus, it looks like, 25i squared. The top is good to go. Okay, the denominator, i squared is negative 1, so it becomes 16 plus 25, or 41. Uh, and then to complete it without writing it as a fraction, okay, a single fraction like this, it's okay to have a fraction, fractions in our real part and our imaginary parts. 8 over 41 plus 10i over 41. And uh, we don't have to do any simplifying because there is none. Oh, this should be 41 down here. Not i, 41. So right in standard form means you have to think in your brain that I've got to multiply by a complex conjugate if I have a fraction because I don't want an imaginary part in the denominator. Okay, just a few more random examples and then we'll be finished. All right, we're going to look at a couple examples where we're asked to simplify and put in standard form. Uh, reminding you, standard form is uh, A plus BI. I guess I've quit numbering examples, so uh, that's all right. Okay, negative 6i cubed plus i squared. All right, so obviously that's not in standard form because we don't have a real part, and we have higher exponents than just i to the first power. Well, we know how to tackle i squared. We can just change that to negative 1. It's the cube. We can't have that. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to look at some patterns. And you can develop them, and I would put them in my notes, too, off to the side here. Okay. All right, so first thing is we know i is equal to the square root of negative 1. i squared, if we square both sides, is negative 1. And that's as far as we went earlier, but we could have extended this pattern. Let's think about i cubed. Well, i cubed is the result of multiplying these two answers together, which means I'd have negative square root of negative 1. Or negative i. All right, what about i to the fourth? Well, I'll go back to i squared. i squared times i squared is i to the fourth, so negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Right, let's look at i to the fifth. Well, to get i to the fifth, I could multiply i to the fourth times i. So that's just going to give me 1i. So i to the fifth is equivalent to i. i to the sixth. There's so many ways to get i to the sixth. You could multiply i cubed times i cubed. Uh, you could multiply i to the fifth um, times i and get i squared. Um, anyway, there's a pattern that starts to happen here. Every 4 and it repeats, so this would be negative 1. i to the 7th is going to be equivalent to i cubed, which is negative i. i to the 8th is going to be equivalent to i to the 4th, which is positive 1. So notice your pattern starts to repeat. We have i, negative 1, negative i, positive 1. So i to the 9th through i to the 12th, 
would be i, negative 1, negative i, and 1. The pattern just repeats every 4. So let's come over here and see if we can use this information to help us simplify here. Oh, I'll try to stick with the red pen. Okay, so negative 6 times i cubed. We'll come over here. i cubed is negative i. Okay, plus i squared, but that is really negative 1, so we're just going to do minus 1. So we'll clean this up here. We have a positive 6i minus 1. Let's rearrange. Negative 1 plus 6i. Okay, probably the most difficult part is going to be to remember what are these powers right here. We'll just generate the first four and repeat them until you need what you need. Okay, let's look at another example. Something we might be asked to do. I know the video is going long, but we're almost done. Oh, I won't make too many mistakes. This is the square root of negative 75, and we want to cube that. So if you expanded it, we're multiplying three of these together. So think about what this means. What we did is individually we pulled out the i's. So we're going to have an i here. 75 is 25 times 3, and 25 times, well, we'll just write it down one time, 25 times 3. So actually that's just one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of recover here, and I'm going to say, you know what, that's cubed. That's three of those cubed. So the result is i cubed times, square root of 25 is 5, but the 3 stays underneath the radical. I'm just kind of going out of order. Now, i cubed, come over here, is negative i. So I'll replace i cubed with negative i, but I think I'm going to put it right here, at least the positive i, and adjust for the negative part of the negative i up front, and then having the square root of 3. I think there's supposed to be a 5 there. So final answer right here. There's no one, one correct way to simplify. Some of us take different paths along the way. Um, as long as we don't make mistakes along the way, I would think that any of the paths we take would be correct. All right, well, that wraps up complex numbers.